Art. Of Art. Of Art. Art. <laughs> Hello. 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 Welcome to the podcast. Oh, hang on. Sorry. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, that's oh. that's going to disappear in the editor. <laughs> <laughs> good, uh, good, uh, good morning and welcome to, and I can say this without fear of contradiction, yep. and welcome to Northern Ireland's number one. <laughs> comic based comics, podcast. Uh, comics based yeah, podcast. Yeah. Uh, the two D cast here on IrishComicNews.com and on FollowingTheNerd.com if they ever bother to post it again. Uh, Kieran Flanagan here along with number one guy, Bobby Best is number one. He's number, number one. one. Number uh, one, America. Tui. And also <laughs> number one guy, Kieran Mark Antonio Las Hello. Ve- Hello. Las Vegas Hello. number one. Las Vegas number one, Kieran Mark Antonio. I take championship belt. And also we've got uh, Wayne Talbot here from the podcast. Hi, Wayne. Hey. Hey, Wayne. I noticed I don't get a number one before my name. I'm perfectly number all one right with McGann that. Fan. I'm, I'm, number one, Paul McGann fan. Number one, Paul McGann fan. No, not Kira Mark Antonio. Number one for Tom Baker fan. Uh, Wayne Talbot. Number one for Paul McGann fan. Yes, I have my McGann bag with me. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Uh, and let's just let's just get straight to that. Yeah. yeah we're, sorry, we're no, Belfast no, no, Film yeah, and yeah, Comic Con. You're saying Belfast Film and Comic Con? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're here. We're outside. We're doing the con thing. We're in wonderful suits. Wayne can, can I ask a question? Right. Yeah. That lead, no, we don't. I ask a quick question about the dynamic of the 2D cast. Is there a general lead man? I'm taking it's Flanagan. Nominally, right? it's me because I do all the work. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah that's right. pretty now, much. I, I, yeah. Can, I can. I can attest to that. That's perfectly okay. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, no, I'm just wondering. So, shouldn't he really lead with the topic and the actual where we are? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, right, no, it's, right. it's it's all right. You know, uh, the conventions of. I'm pod- on your side, Flanagan. The, con- okay. the conventions of podcasts. You two just love slapping uh, me down. That's all it is. And now you have both of you here. You're just going to slap me down even worse. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> I've uh, tried three sentences now during this, the entirety of this podcast, and you have talked over all of them so okay uh, bye <laughs> uh, yeah go on you were saying <laughs> was I <laughs> yes yes you were no, no. Uh, this is really going well Bobby then. Bobby Hi. tell us where we are and what we're doing uh, ladies and gentlemen we are at the beautiful W5 the Odyssey Arena um, this is Belfast Film and Comic Con that's it Thank so you, like, good night. So like, That's uh, it, thank you. Tell me, Bobby Bass, good night. Enjoy, Thomas, the, re- enjoy the rest of your evening. Tip your waitress. You got a uh, very nice con exclusive this morning, Bobby. Oh, uh, yes, you? I did. I, I, have a, uh, I have a PJ Holden um, sketch on my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fucking touch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to lick it. Right. No. Uh, like, well, you were talking about... Uh, yeah, Wynne Talbot uh, is the lead feature on the 2D cast. Is uh, Has met someone... <laughs> Uh, I've met someone. Do you met Paul McGann? Who I have to say, someone who's been waiting to meet his whole life. I tell you, like, someone it, who looks as fucking. This is a really weird thing to say, but Paul McGann really, really looks like Paul McGann. Yeah. He's an attractive yeah. man, is Paul McGann, He's isn't he? Fresh as the day he was birthed from Richard E. Grant's birth canal. Yeah. yeah. I swear to God, he's he's a beautiful looking man, and we actually had this conversation. Uh, that I we pro- would not yeah. let our ladies near him. I wouldn't no, let my. I wouldn't let no. near Paul McGann. No, no. Th- this this could sound like a weird thing, but as you all know. Um, young uh, Bridget Jones looks nothing like Bridget Jones anymore. No, no, no. And I, I don't really think that's a, it's a topic that needs to be discussed. Let's talk about Syria. Uh, because that's Guys, uh, important. Gentlemen, I don't know about you, but the situation in Palestine is really getting on my tit end. Far more than Rene Zellberg is passing through. Yeah. But there you go. I like pretty I know Paul McGann was a, an absolute gentleman and uh, he was very happy to sign everything I own. Including, <laughs> including his all, house. Uh, borderline my penis, but um, thankfully he signed my collection of DVDs, books, comics and the Daryl Shaw commission that I got for Dice. Hello to Daryl Shaw. Which he absolutely which adored. I must say, and I'm going to say now I think I think it's the first one of Daryl Shaw's doctor sketches to be signed, signed by, by the doctor, doctor yeah, th- yeah. that has been sketching it. We should so. get a certificate of authenticity for that. Daryl Shaw is a winner for life. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully his son is feeling a lot better after top, chopping the top yeah. of his finger off. Yeah. Just, no. Oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah it's a nasty one. Nasty. Although I'm sure uh, selling out the entirety of the first round of Detective 1945 is uh, a suitable panacea for that. Glorious. Yeah, yeah glorious. fair play to him and, and uh, Lucy. So fair play. Like, um, no, McGann was lovely. And uh, we're going to interview him later on uh, for the podcast. Um, Sorry, we didn't get that when <laughs> that's lost. In the <laughs> uh, so that'll be good. But you guys have it all lined up. You've got a ton of comic shit happening at this one. Who yeah. are you guys talking to? Oh, yeah, well, later on in this very episode, we will be talking to. Don't uh, promise nothing, don't promise nothing, don't promise nothing. 
we were talking we, we to have some, some interviews lined up. Yeah, we're, we're, depending uh, on pit access yeah. and availability. That of, sounds like you have to fight to the death. Yeah. Basically, it's, yeah. it's yeah. somewhat it's like that. You pit approach pit fighter of a the, And you know what's really scary? The guys that run the pits, red shirts, all of them. Yeah. Really? Yeah. They're not going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> you got to throw the, the, the nostalgic love towards pit fighter. There's nothing like <laughs> breaking a chair over a mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, true. that's true. Okay, this I can confirm. Later on in this episode, we will be talking to PJ Holden about Number Cruncher and uh, Department of Monsterology. Whenever else he thinks of. Yes, uh, the, the, he'll take control. The meandering road of PJ Holden conversations will again grace the 2D cast. We will be talking to uh, Danny from Uproar Comics about yep. uh, Zombies High, about Leap and their new book, which I have fucking conundrum. forgotten. Thank you, Conundrum. Yep. I have forgotten <laughs> the name of that. We will be talking to James... Bond. No, James Obar. Kieran, your thoughts? Are, are, are we going to confirm that? That's the one we weren't confirming, I wasn't talked, it? I talked to his woman. Okay, all right. And you talked to him as well. I talked to him as well, but I'm still, until it actually happens. Again, uh, I was like this when we got this yeah, morning. A, I was I'm on a, the train I'm coming up I'm a pretty up, big Obar yeah. fanboy, and I've got to put that away and be a pro here. And Yeah, more more so than ever, because I know fuck all about him. Yeah, oh, well, I've got his entire works, collective works in my bag. I'm um, shocked, so, yeah, shocked to hear that. That's not a problem. Bobby, uh, have you anything that you're looking forward to Conway's just walking around and seeing people and, and, and Ken Watanabe Abbey. Let, let, let them fight I will I will like to give props to the staff so far they've been absolutely yeah. lovely yeah, yeah. Very, very accommodating very accommodating staff actually why sweet duster bro <laughs> Sorry, while, right there. while we're all here, let's let's talk about the elephant in the room, so to speak, on the Irish uh, con scene. Sorry, uh, sorry, I have to stop for one moment. Look at that amazing American Horror Story cosplay. That's pretty cool, actually. Fantastic. Sorry. It Which, happens when we're outside. We're outside on a bench right now, a palatial bench outside the... Is that what these are called? Palatial benches? So wherever we sit when we record a 2D cast outside, it's palatial. It's palatial. That's what we yeah. do, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we, we find palatial, unpalatial situations and make them palatial. Let's talk about... Uh, you kicked over a fucking hornet's nest uh, this weekend, didn't you, son? And then you took the hornet's nest, went and Talbot, set it on and fire. set on fire and fucked it through a window into somebody's house. <laughs> yeah. uh, Proper order. With regards to MCM... Uh, Fuck them guys. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, MCM announced the dates for their con next year in Dublin, which happens to fall... Two weeks between DICE and Dublin Comic Con. Yes. Now, yeah, they've changed their date from early April to mid-August, yep. which is, if without fear of editorialising here, a really fucking shitty move. Yeah, dicky, dick, yeah. dick, dick move. You know that what I think it's going to resemble? It's going to resemble the human centipede. They are going to be the convention filled with all the shit that is coming from the first convention, and then that was being excreted to the last convention. They will be the shit centre. That's the one. That's the one I pointed out to you inside. <laughs> <laughs> they will be the shit centre to the to the horrible chocolate fudge of con, con season, because they will have nothing that will interest me personally. Right. Well, let's let's clarify some things here. That the, the initial furore began with the announcement of the date, and then people started asking what I considered to be well reasoned, quite reasonable and, questions, quite reasonable yeah. questions uh, which were then deleted. I had a look at their policy before I, once I realised that they were starting to act that way, they were they were starting to delete conversations and delete replies to uh, genuinely reasoned questions. So I had a look at their posting policy and made sure that I was towing the line absolutely to the letter of their posting policy while also trying to express reasoned questions and um, also trying to, you know, just get some answers from MCM as to why they made this decision. Uh, unfortunately, they decide, well, you know, it's all there on my Facebook anyway, if yeah. anybody's interested to go and see it. We will post a link to that uh, in the show notes. But and uh, just like somebody who is not racist would say, I have some black friends, they said, uh, oh, well, one of the guys who organizes it is Irish. Yeah, yeah. but hasn't. So, well, so. remember that's the trick they tried when um, we discussed the uh, originally 2D was supposed to be on a particular weekend earlier this year. Yeah, uh, and they just happened to have a convention on that weekend. Yeah, that weekend yeah. in uh, Belfast. And, yeah. w and when they were questioned on it, they said, "Oh, we've never even heard of 2D." Yeah. And then they completely, they completely contradicted themselves and said, uh, "Oh no, we were aware of it, but yeah, yeah." Which is a well, lie. Very long story short, MCM have have kind of push themselves into the convention scene in Ireland in such yeah. a way that it's become quite evident that they're trying to, in muscle. my opinion anyway, muscle in on the other conventions. And but that's what MCM do. It is what MCM do. MCM are the bully convention. They basically see a market 
and they decide they're going to fucking carpet bomb that market yeah. with their absolute turd of a show, um, which is represent does not represent the local community correctly at all whatsoever. Uh, it is basically a merchandise show. Pantro. Pantro, yeah, there's an awesome Pantro cover <laughs> over there. London Jets, Zero G Football. What? That is the most obscure Red Dwarf t-shirt I've ever seen. Okay. <laughs> uh, but that's what MCM are. MCM do that. That's the, They basically see a market, they go for it, and they just carpet bomb it with crap. Yeah. Um, so it, that's what they're doing with the Irish market. They do it all around England. Their London Comic Con is on at the moment. And uh, they do, in fairness to the London version, the London one seems to be the crown, you know, the crown jewel that they have. They do pull a lot of guests and things, but they're not a comic convention. If, no. I, can, if I can speak to that, because I've actually been to that one, I, I also, a lot of the pupils that I teach are going there this weekend, but it's they don't. There's, there's nothing comic related. It's a hangout. They go yeah. and they sit around outside and they make signs that say free hugs and they dress up as fucking Pikachu and that's it. They, so a lot of that's them don't. It. A lot of them don't even bother going into the convention. They just hang out outside. outside. Yeah. And MCM take that and they get photographs of all these kids dressed in cosplay and they use it to their advantage by putting these shitty speech bubbles on MCM and post it online and MCM was amazing, MCM was this, MCM yeah. was that. So like MCM take credit for a lot of hard work that a lot of cosplayers and attendees put in to, their, to, to attend that actual scene. And in fairness, it just turns out to be a fucking hangout for those kids. Like you just said, Kieran, they don't even go into the convention. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, as far as the scene in Ireland is concerned, there's a far more larger uh, hey, the Doctor group of villains to like fight t-shirts. Right there, well, red hoodie. See. Oh, I see it. Yeah, oh, those uh, blue box, uh, blue box I think it was. Right. Let's anyway, speaking sorry. speaking of Doctor Who, uh, but yeah, one of the, one <laughs> of the few, on topic, on topic. one of the few things that they actually allowed on it was, um, I think it was the moderator who said, uh, "Well, you know, these local events, you know, if they choose to engage with us, fuck you, engage with why don't why doesn't MCM." Engage with the other cons before making such shitty decisions. Um, I, one of the, a person, an individual of myself, Kieran, now emails one of we emailed the uh, email address for questions about MCM, and the reply he got back referred to MCM as having uh, sorry, it's referred to these other conventions that are happening around the same time as, as satellite, satellite, as satellite yeah. events, which would imply that they orbit around MCM, and MCM was the big event. The most arrogant fucking email I've ever had the displeasure of reading. It's, um, it's full also available full of, on my Facebook page. Yeah. Yeah. Full of corporate doublespeak and fucking oh, wank, pure bold wank. face lies. It's there's the opportunity here for synergy. Okay, that that exists. People are you know, I, I think the the cons in Ireland, are, you know, the small cons, are approachable. You know, oh, and then there's room there, there's there room there to work with them. For example, um, the Heroes and Legends con. Yeah. Last, we were able to work in conjunction with them. They they allowed us to advertise 2D. We did a podcast from this very site. Was it not? It was. It was the W. Well, was the W. Five. But yeah, it was the Odyssey. And arena. having spoken to Martin Ryan this morning, I can tell you that Heroes and Legends is looking to move down south as well. So you know that is a factor. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's it's per show. Right. I mean, in the interest of balance here, okay. I know a lot of people that do enjoy the. Uh, the, the, the MCM cons and in fact I'll go one further we just spoke with P PJ Holden that said that uh, no less an individual than uh, was John McRae rated it as the second best con that he'd ever been to the for one. business no in, for Belfast. Business. in Belfast yeah sorry for that's business. not how that's said yeah that's for not how business. that's said business business John McRae had good business yes headmaster sold loads of dicks yeah. uh, John McRae did attend the Dublin one but he attended it as uh, somebody who had to buy his table yeah. he yeah. bought a table they compensated him by giving him a table at Belfast yeah but uh, like as far as the comic like this is a comics podcast so say take a take a, the idea of the comic uh, guests who were actually two of them are actually at this convention um, Simon Beasley and Glenn Fabry were at the Dublin MCM they weren't provided with any signage they, they had to, Simon Beasley had to make or his beer. own or beer. I had to provide beer. Simon Beasley had to write it, make it, write his own name on a piece of paper and stick it on his standee. They positioned him at the arse end of the comics village where all the indie like, um, honestly, crowd are. Somebody who was, a, who was a member of that comics village. They were not prominently featured. No, they in weren't fact, at all. A lot of small the, press guys the, were far uh, more prominently the featured. The Just Dance and the Rock Band stand that was put next to them was more prominently featured than Simon Beasley, Beasley and Glenn Fable. Yeah, oh, which that baffles me. Gotten on my oh, it got on Beasley's tits. One minute. God, do you remember PJ and the pinball machine at 2D? Oh, Christ. We've we gone mad. We put T PJ Holden by a pinball machine and he went fucking mental. Yeah, I think yeah, <laughs> he just went and unplugged it after five minutes, didn't he? Well, my recommendation, folks, if you decide that you want to go to a convention uh, in yeah. Ireland, 
check out the other cons. You have DCC, yeah. you've got Dice, you've got Arcade Con, you've got all of the other uh, anime cons. Uh, Octacon is a sci-fi writer's con. There's a fuck ton of them. Yeah. Gale Con is on this weekend at the moment uh, in Balls Bridge. It's a gamer's con. There's a way more out there than MCM. Yeah, don't, don't give... I think don't give them your money. Yeah, don't that's give, all they're after. Don't give them your money. Well, that's uh, a message we're going to be preaching for a while. So... Okay, I think we'll sign off for the segment now. Later on, also, we have to do the second, uh, the second part of our Paul Heyman retrospective. Oh yes, we will do that. Uh, yeah, and also we have to do our saga special that we promised last September. Oh, and, 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 and the political comics one. The political comics one, and also the Inhuman special that we that we promised. So uh, uh, before WrestleMania. So we're talking like a three-hour podcast. Yeah, yeah, or or a podcast, as you might also call it. <laughs> Do you and see? I, and I will attest to that. That, yeah. is, that is a fair cop. <laughs> oh. Okay, so we'll check in with you soon. We are back on the TV cast, and we are here with PJ Bloody Holden. PJ, how are you, darling? I've got food, mate. I'm all right. I've got food, mate. And it's not for the reasons you're thinking, listeners. Yeah. I'm eating a sandwich. Oh, yeah. PJ has brought uh, a... Not v- a Bobby Best sandwich, just a proper sandwich. <laughs> PJ has brought a very well appointed packed lunch here, and mm. uh, we're just we're just uh, sharing it with him, not literally, but we're, we're sharing the spirit. Ignoring the, the luxuries of the mm. green room, yeah. oh yeah, PJ yeah. in favour of his own wonderful selection of food. PJ, talk to us about the Department of Monsterology because uh, it seems to be going swimmingly. Well, yeah, um, um, we, well, we, we talked about this the last time, didn't we? Yeah. Didn't I, I mention how awesome it was and how awesome I am? Yeah. Well, I said the yeah, last time those, yeah, we did. That was I, actually I the book, and then yeah. also said how awesome you were. Mm. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that was it. that was some other podcast. <laughs> oh, was it? <laughs> <laughs> write the name of it down, and could you write down the exact minute when you tell me how awesome I am? I will, that'll, yeah, yeah. that'll save me having the rest of it. In fact, PJ, the last time we had you on this show was just before Department of Monsterology came out, which was... Was it, it, was was not, it not last was it not week, at Dice? No, that was some other podcast. Oh, was, was that it? the other podcast? Yes. I don't know, you point one of those things to my mind. I'm a member of it, he gets confused. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, they, but the same people, uh, <laughs> the same yeah. device, it is so very confusing. We last per, spoke person. to you in episode 37, which was the Belfast Comic Creators Meetup, outside uh, McHugh's, was it? Or, no, the Garrick. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was, that was it. Was last August, just before Department of Monsterology was released. So hmm. why don't you, in postmortem? Is there not is there not like a Venn diagram of your listeners where they are exactly the same people? Uh, well, <laughs> yes, the, uh, and you know both I mean, of, both, both, both of them are here today. Yeah, all two of them are here. You might have them on as guests later. We'll all right. So what, what's happened since, for the benefit of those that don't listen to the other podcast with you guys and me talking, and Andrew McCarroll. <laughs> um, <laughs> The, uh, so Monsterology came out, at, uh, coincidentally, about a week after DICE, but we managed to get copies of it shifted to DICE. Sold out, as far as I know, they had 50 copies yeah, yeah. out there that sold out, uh, or maybe you know, one or two left. Um, actually, they gave me three at the start of the day. Uh, and said, you know, there's some copies because it hasn't seen it yet. Stick in with your hand, big man. Yeah, yeah. Stick so, in your bog. Right. So uh, they give me three, and then by the end of the day, I went to see how they'd done. They went, oh, we're, we, we're done. We, I think we've sold them all. And I've got these three here. <laughs> you, do you know, have you ever seen, you ever seen Brewster's Millions? Yes. Right at the end where he goes, oh, well, have I done it? Have I done it? I've got rid of all my millions. It's good news. Yeah, yeah, but great news. I've managed to save you You're 30 not broke. bob. You're okay. <laughs> and he goes, no. <laughs> so it was a bit like it was a Brewster's Millions moment. But then somebody else came in and bought one, so I think they'd one or two left. But like for fifty copies of a what was a twenty euro book, yeah, um, for one con, that's pretty for good. One con. Conven- for one convention, and especially the way it was the convention was set up was that uh, the comic shop was in one location, so you go there and buy your books, and then the convention was another location. So if you wanted to come and get your book signed, you could buy a ticket to the convention and up you go. So I wasn't even standing or handing the book out to people; I was kind yeah. of somewhere else. So I thought that was a very good thing to do. I mean, it created the buzz around both areas. Mm. The, the first thing in the morning, the queue was there each day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I went, <laughs> I went to get a copy, uh, and I was I was at the kind of department of monstrology, and then I saw, oh wait, Michael. Michael Carroll's here as well, so if we get this Judge Dredd book instead, he can sign that as well. Instead? Instead. Instead? As well, that's how that's that sounds. Well, that's supposed yeah. to go. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that's okay. I uh, coincidentally, actually, when they shipped 50 copies over, I got 50 cent for me, mm. so I can take the conventions and stuff, yeah, so I actually sure. have copies of it with, yeah. with me. So, you know, that doesn't have to be the end of that tragic story of you not yeah. buying the monstrology. <laughs> <laughs> 
How's the number cruncher hard to find? It's slightly more awkward because it has, it, as far as I know, is, is unavailable. You can't buy it anywhere. Right. Um, and because I've got Monstrology with me, I kind of thought I'd, I'd love, if people were asking for it down at yeah. Dice, and of course I, I didn't have any with me. Yeah. Um, so I ended up buying a bunch off Amazon, <laughs> right. just just to have some, <laughs> just to have, them there, just to yeah. have some. Yeah. So if somebody says I want one now, because you, yeah. you sort of you don't. I'd rather well, do it was one of the ones I came looking for today because yeah, I yeah. have monsterology. Yeah. I had their account, so I was like, so what else can we? Yeah, get? so I'm not so, yeah. making any money on those things, but you know, it's nice to be able to sell them and, and yeah. get, let people see it and, and have it. And it's a nice book, so yeah. you know, it's nice to have it. Are there plans for any more number cruncher? Uh, there are not uh, specific plans for any more number cruncher. Um, for those, uh, if you've not read it, um, Number Cruncher has a very strong beginning, middle, and end. Yes. They're not necessarily in that order. Um, but <laughs> but they, um, it's, Oh, it's Simon Spurrier. It's a very clever, He's a good lad, obviously, so. obviously all in one story. It's obviously all in that one, one book. So, so oh, but come, come on, yeah, yeah. How, many, how many one and done uh, 2000 AD or magazine stories have been undone there. Well, the, the nice thing about a creator own thing uh, is that um, you don't get paid enough to make uh, doing a sequel worthwhile. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so there's that element of it. But, but I mean, I don't want to spoil it. But I no, mean, it's don't, don't, don't. But, but um, it's very clear from the story that what's left, there's no more of that particular story left. Yeah. yeah. But, um, and, and again, I say, and, and the best example I can think of this is Button Man. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That was a book that was beginning, middle, end, hmm. done. Yeah. And, and yet we got Button Man 2. Uh, right. Yeah, you, it's hard there, for me to draw parallels. Look, I'm going to say is that there's always a way to find a sequel if you want. Oh, yeah, to yeah. I mean, the, yeah, yeah. let's face yeah. it. There's, there's room for you. I mean, the, the, the story of, of um, Number Cruncher takes place over what it amounts to about 100 years or so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it takes place. And the, one of the central conceits of it is that you can be reincarnated anywhere in time. And the main character has lived for in real time. Maybe the the main villain of the piece, uh, yeah. Bastard Zane, has lived for in real time for about 120 years. But in in the way that time travel works within it, it's an infinite it's amount good. of time. Yeah. Yeah. So you know there is plenty of room to go somewhere with That's, him if you want yeah. to. Yeah. But the question is, that, you know, whether that story is so complete and perfect, a little puzzle box. That do you, you don't want, want to mess. You with don't it. want. You don't necessarily yeah. want to mess with it or have yeah. people go. Well, this is. You know, and, and again, it's hard to explain this without spoiling it, but I think it's fair to say that, that anything you do, you'll inevitably go, well, where does this take place in this? Yeah, yeah. You know, because it doesn't make sense. Yeah, unless you have, like, um, you know, the, the story takes place in between pages 21 yeah, and Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you I, haven't read it then, have you? No, you haven't. I haven't read the first issue. Yeah. Oh, that's, no, that's not the same as I was, read I was saving to get the trade. <laughs> Which you also, is that other one you haven't got? Well, I happily have that trade as well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Flanagan is sending into a red face, so crushed wallet. as well as I do. There's nothing in the wallet to get. I've spaced out my wallet over the course of the year, so I made sure to catch up with everything PJ has. Yeah. <laughs> but look, I mean, uh, you know, you'll struggle to find more number cruncher to be honest with you because yeah. it's, it's hard to get. I think Forbidden Planet and Belfast have a have like nine copies of it, but I'm probably going to swoop in and buy all of them just That's to, a smart to move. have, have oh, them. Okay, I, I will. The next time I see you, I will make sure. It's so one you're not we're doing one of, them, to, one of them sneaky podcasts we do, John. Oh, he's running away. He's running away. So the recorder. John Donaldson of the final first is out. Yes. <laughs> Right, I have two other, uh, well, sets of questions here that I want to put to you. The first one relates to something that um, you discussed on the last episode of the, the... Can I go back to the question about a sequel? Go back to the sequel. Right. Somebody else had asked Simon Spurrier about that, and we chatted about it, and he said, we could do a sequel, but I'd rather do something new. So, I mean, that's not to say something new is going to happen, yeah. but if, if Simon and I were to sit down and do something, He's a very it would be something new. Yeah. He could easily yeah. come up with something mm -hmm. else if he wanted to. On his X4 stuff. <laughs> um, the last episode, uh, which may well be the last episode of the Sunnyside Comics podcast, yeah. you brought up something that I had completely forgotten about and have since went back and got. But um, in about 1990, CNVG had a feature. Bug Hunters? Yeah, the core. Oh, right. It was, it was called the core, wasn't it? No, well, they, they had a couple of strips. So they started with Bug Hunters, which was about a bunch of robots that went around kind of doing things. And they were uh, uh, drawn by Jerry Paris. Yeah. Uh, not Jerry Paris. Who produced Happy Days? This is a different Jerry. Hey. And, uh, it's sort of Whoa. spontaneous. spontaneous. Um, uh, but Jerry Paris drew that, and then after that, he drew a strip called Lieutenant Law, 
which was about a, a kind of a police robot with two big with four I, arms. Yeah. It was awesome. It was awesome. I, for some reason, I had convinced myself that it was Simon Bisley that did the art for that. No, no, um, Jerry Paris. Jerry, yeah. Jerry Paris, very different artist. Um, Jerry Paris then went on to do book covers, and, you, and you've probably seen a lot of his work but not realised it. He does a lot of young adult book covers. It's not that uh, that's the sort of books you read, but, you know, if you've seen him in a bookshop. Well, he's looked specifically at Bobby, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. Looked, he looks yeah. like a young adult reader. Romance, but in. He looks like he likes reading about young adults. Uh, and the other thing we want to do is give you the, the uh, Judge Dread lightning round that we gave Michael Carroll mm-hmm. and see, see how you do. Okay. Are you ready? All right. Are you okay? Uh-huh. Are you ready? Okay. F- favorite mega epic? F- uh, uh, Cursed, uh, uh, City of the Damned. City of the Damned, why? Because it just hit me right at the perfect spot that that I had was really wanted to read it, but peer pressure was stopping me from reading comics anymore. So it was that last, I'm never going to see this ever, ever again. And, it, and I never got to really read all of it, so it, it escaped me and, and, and stuck with me for a long, long time. And then whenever I came back to doing comics and was drawing comics and I was talking to someone about it, um, I went, oh, it was a convention in 2008 at us all. And I, they, they, they're, I'm talking really fast because it's, it's a light. Yeah, go for I'm it. Under pressure. Go for it. Um, they had their, their collections. And City of the Damned, I think it's in book six or something. And I went, I've got to buy this and read it. So I, I took a copy away, sat down and read it. Fucking brilliant! That was the, was uh, brilliant. just that to was clarify, brilliant. that was the one where Dread goes into the future. Yeah, Dread, it's it's the one that's... It's um, the sequel to The Judge Child. Yeah, The Judge Child is about yeah. Dread. There's a uh, Judge uh, Faye uh, produces a prophecy that says in the year 2120, uh, Mega City 1's going to be saved by The Judge Child. Uh, and then the Dread goes off to Mega Epic to discover who The Judge Child is. And it discovers a little this, bollocks. This little bollocks. He's a, Shite. Yeah, a little get. So he, he basically orders the planet destroyed and him destroyed. And then... Uh, then later on, uh, the Dread, uh, they build this time machine called the Prometheus. Him and Judge Anderson go far into the future, into the year 2120, uh, to see what's happened. And, and that's when you find out how wrong Judge Faye's prediction was. And it's fucking awesome! So check, check out that. Check uh, that out. Who's your favourite Dread artist? Who's None my, that you can't uh, have yourself. No, no, well, I, I, I'm not my favourite Michael, Michael, Michael Carroll tried to have a self. <laughs> no, <laughs> Hang on, can I make a guess at this? Is it Mike McMahon? Mike McMahon would be up there, yeah. but, but if we're talking about when I was that age reading City of the Damned, it was Steve Dillon, because that was also one of the reasons City of the Damned was that, was that yeah. lost epic to me, because when, when I saw it, and it might have been one of the last issues of 2008 I saw, it was a big poster size uh, inside double page spread of Dread, the mutant monster from City of the Damned, yeah. drawn by Steve Dillon. So what, S- Steve Dillon seems to have emerged from the womb just perfect. As like, as if you look well, up. you could say that almost literally, because I think the first comics he ever drew was about 15. His yeah. first professional comics he ever drew, he was 15 or something. I was actually, I was on his Wikipedia the other day, and, and then he, um, he moved to Dublin, because his reason for moving to Dublin Tax was... reasons. That's, <laughs> the reason he gave us the, the Guinness is better. I think, I think that's called a reverse one. <laughs> no, no, it, it was definitely tax reasons, yeah. <laughs> okay, best, uh, dread, best Dread writer. Best Dread writer? Um, uh, well, go, I, I really rate Gordon Rennie. Um, and the, the, I really love Al Ewing stuff, and I'm yeah. avoiding the typical people that, that we, we all think about, yeah. um, John Wagner. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, T.B. Grover was the best was the best dread writer, and that was Alan Grant and John Wagner writing stuff together. Very disappointed to find that wasn't a real person, and that I'd never This is the part of the podcast before. where we know Michael Carroll's here is peak up, waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for it. I might have said it. But I, I, I love the, the Mad's, uh, Al's mad invention and, and bonkersness, and, and I, I saw he... he I think it was a text or an email or something. He was, he was uh, somehow some round robin that I was involved in. And he said, is it too much, do you think, to have Dread punching a laser? I went, yes! <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dread can punch a laser. Why not? That seems perfectly sane. But I love Al as a writer. And, and uh, I, I, Al's just an insanely, <laughs> you know. But uh, it's, it's, it's like a question, you know. Yeah, 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 him, yeah. And, and, and I mean, I really like Rob Williams as well. I love Gordon. I think Gordon's stuff's very underrated because... Um, you know, he, he's, just, he's a very funny writer and he's a very good writer. Um, but I mean, there's so many of them that are yeah. great. But but Al's humour, it just it's hits quirky. right hits yeah. right in my sweet spot. And and I mean, I'm, it's not uh, he's better than him or he's better than him. It's just 
it hits right in my sweet spot in a way that that even other humor writers yeah, often don't, don't, don't yeah. quite you know they're funny and I really love them but but all stuff just but at the same time I've drawn with Gordon because um, I mean it's hard because the funniest things Gordon's written I think are the ones I've drawn yeah. and uh, but you see that's something you get that at the script stage and obviously that's something that you're going to look at in the hmm. script and go that's fucking brilliant and that's a different experience than we mere mortals get isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. well also not even just that but it's also uh, I get it the, wouldn't it be really funny isn't, do you think this guy wears a wig do you think he yeah, I think he wears a wig in, in a telephone and then it's a three part Judge Dredd story called It Came From B. Arthur Block about intergalactic space wigs <laughs> attempting to take over Mega City 1 then you get to draw it and it, yeah. and it starts with a stupid seed of a conversation all the way through and that, that's a really brilliant experience favourite one off Dredd story favourite one off oh that's um, Sino City because that's the first Dread I ever drew and it's also a very funny Dread story if you ever get the chance to read it it's a very funny Dread best chief judge uh, Judge Hershey. Probably. That's two for Hershey. That's two for, I That's go two go, for Hershey. I will go Magruder myself. I'm a Magruder man myself. Yeah. I like uh, him with a beard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think uh, it's hard because uh, very often the chief judges just fall into the background for me. I don't really yeah. think. Silver them, very, very much fell yeah. into that yeah, for yeah, me. They're, they're just, they're part of Dredd's world, like a, a gimp or a, you know, yeah. um, a gimp, sorry, rather than a gimp. It would uh, be a very different, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, very different. scene from Pulp or, Fiction. Or uh, any other, you know, like um, he, Anderson tends to be a stronger character than any of the chief judges, mm, but true. Hershey, Hershey yeah. seems to be, I think they're giving her fuller characterization, and she's also been in it, and she's got yeah. history yeah. Yeah. in she there. She would have been, she's probably the first chief judge that I can remember who would have been in the comics uh, a street judge before she mm. became chief judge. Well, she was, yeah, she was in the City of the Dam, yeah. or not City of the Dam, she was the, the judge that went out with, with Dredd yeah. in, in uh, no, in the, in the Judge Dredd, uh, uh, the the Judge Child Saga. Yeah. She was on the she was on the spaceship with Dredd, oh, well, yes. along with your Judge Lopez and his unfortunate moustache. Yes. <laughs> uh, right. Walter the Wobot, Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Uh, Maria the Housekeeper. Yes or yes. no? Uh, tweak. I'm all for tweak. Yes or no? For ridiculous ster uh, racial stereotypes. Uh, tweak. Yes. If you could bring back one thing from uh, Dread Past that has sort of disappeared, any character, concept, or conceit. What would it be? Uh, I, 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 Maria and <laughs> Maria and Walter the Wobot. Maybe because you just mentioned them and they're, they're yeah, yeah. just springing immediately to mind. Well, but I, 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 I like the wackier aspects of Dread. I love the, the over the top Dreads having a bath and he's wearing his helmet. I, uh, you know, I, I love that. <laughs> I'd completely I forgot, like actually, that Walter came back as a, a used car salesman <laughs> in like 19. He was a successful businessman. <laughs> but. But, I did. Yeah, but the problem is, the problem is, my sense of humor doesn't necessarily align with a lot of readers' sense of humor. So that's, so, that's kind so, of a problem, isn't it? Yeah. So, so for example, I did a John, uh, John Wagner dread, which was um, basically um, Wagner dread, which was basically dread went to a different planet where there was a big war going on, and and uh, they had troops over there, and they were all in their their you know armor, and, and they're, they're all camouflaged and stuff. And I thought it would be hilariously funny if Dredd just wandered around on his bike in the full, the, the big golden regalia of Dredd, <laughs> yeah. and not a single bullet hit him. Yeah. Whereas the rest of them were in camo and they're all getting shot, shot left, right, yeah, yeah. You know, I thought that was just the funniest thing, example, but it, didn't, it, it, it turned out not everyone agreed with me, <laughs> and it was ill received. Okay, uh, Judge Dredd has a, a weird habit of announcing his intentions when he's killing someone, so what's the last thing you want to hear before you die, like on the high X book knife? Um, Said gun to diarrhea. <laughs> that, that would work. <laughs> what is your dream uh, dread team writer and artist? Me and probably Gordon Rennie because we've done it and yeah. it's great and I I it's love his stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have never done a dread with Al, but I, I, but I I I nearly want to see Al stuff there on the page you know yeah. I, I, I but i've worked you with Alan, experience as, it yeah, yeah yeah um but as a as a creative team me and, and gordon on on dread is always is but i think he swore off dread so that's never going to happen anymore <laughs> what have you got the plug what have you got the plug, got a plug. um but i like big butts and i can't <laughs> But I can't do that. Some girl wants best me. Anyway, uh, no. <laughs> You'll enjoy that comment. <laughs> uh, I have 
uh, Department of Monsterology is available to buy in all good comic shops still. And a I couple of shit ones. And a couple of shit ones. Uh, it's, a, it's a trade, so it should have a longer shelf life than the comic. So, Number um, Cruncher is available in nowhere. It's well, available uh, here now. You should just get it. I've got some yeah. copies with me. And Forbidden Planet have nine, I think, but I'm probably going to buy them. So uh, I, uh, after that, I, I think you're going to struggle to even yeah. find it. Yeah. So if you can go shame, back... And, but it's a great, it's a great series of yeah. game, right? It's a great so series. So if, if you can go back in time and visit uh, Belfast uh, Film and Comic Con... Last probably, week. Yeah, 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 last week. You should probably buy it. You probably buy that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have them. I'll, I'll keep one for you. Uh, <laughs> good borrow, PJ. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you, PJ. And we are back here on the 2D cast. <laughs> See, that? that's total professionalism there. Uh, we are back here on the 2D cast, and we are with, we're only bloody with Danny McLaughlin from Opera. Well, Connor. hello, everyone. Hi, Danny. So long since we had you on the show. Too long, too long. Just, it's, it's well over a year, actually. And in fact... No, it's been closer to two. It's been closer. I think the last time we spoke to him was uh, 2D, mate, rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, no, because we had um, we had Gio on uh, 2D last year. See, I, I keep a low profile, like I... Oh, you're very, I, you're very shy. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, well, shy, I'm well, shy. Uh, yeah, but like, Gio's like the political wing. He's like the like an upper uh, comics. <laughs> upper uh, comics. <laughs> That's uh, the next move, I'd say there. Like. Uh, and and to come to think of it, the, the last time we talked to uh, Opera Comics was just one title, and now it is not just one uh, title. No, it's uh, five. Five think, titles. Yeah. Well, well, let's start uh, at the start and tell, talk to us about Leap. Leap. Uh, well, I, I believe you just got the digital version there recently. Oh, uh, well, we're going to get under the here by no, a no, 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 no. We're just going to keep going. We're going to keep going. <laughs> We are joined by that other uh, 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 Mark Antonio was here because he uh, he never misses FaceTime. I <laughs> ram raid these things. Here so, I am. Leap. Leap, uh, I, I believe you what I call it, got the digital version. That that's uh, that I, was I got the digital and print. Oh well there excuse you go, us, Danny. excuse us. There you go, Danny. Uh, well the first of all it was supposed to be for the digital uh, like motion comic, that's what we planned it for. So that that was the main goal. Now we've got it out in print and stuff like that there too. Uh, I, I don't I, I like the print. Like, I, oh, I, I like the print. I, I like the oversized 2008 almost style exactly. that he did to it. We, it we made it bigger nice. because it, yep. it, it's space. It's bigger than Derry. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, we had to do a bigger sort of book. Like. Space is bigger <laughs> than Derry. Somewhat. That's, just somewhat. It's, 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 <laughs> that's going to be on the cover of something someday. <laughs> <laughs> Sci-fi books look nicer in that nice bigger format yeah, yeah. as well. well so well, we're, we're obvious. Looking forward to Conundrum. Oh, yeah. You know what? That's the one I'm sort of quite excited for. Especially because we've got Arby. Yeah. yeah, he's sitting over on the table and doing sketches yeah. for people. That's his first and of book. Of course, the Zombies High, as ever. Oh, yes, yeah, oh, we were like, Zombies High is oh, the flagship. Fuck yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? I hear they had a great writer in issue 9. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, Self promotion there, of course. Bring it all back to you. <laughs> Do you want your belt back? Yeah, no. yeah. Well, Take it. Mostly I, want you, <laughs> mostly, I want you to stop spinning it. No, I can't. I, I can only spin it over here. Oh, it's oh, it's very fluid. It's nice. <laughs> But uh, yes, I conundrum is uh, it's you know what it's been in my head brewing for at least eight years now, so it's nice to get that out and about you know. So and can't wait to actually get on the next issue because it's going to be even better. And uh, what's the future zombie side? Because you seem to have moved on to a more uh, how do I put this delicately, a more consistently spaced schedule now. Yes, yes, of course. So, like I think the biggest gap was eight months or so on. And oh well. I might have been there would be no zombies if, if there hadn't have been that eight months or anything yeah. like so it was all all the spaces in between was to actually get the business and business get, getting used to managing people uh, that's that's the odd thing I must admit yeah um, but, I, 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 you've never actually been in the Upper headquarters, have you? No, I, I was I, I was in there as part you, of a, as, as, the as, as, as part of a thing that I was doing, and it's like. It's like an office. Yeah. Oh, with them I'd love telling, to go to it. Just to telling people. Oh, we on the new one. With them telling people, no, I haven't. Not in the. No, I haven't. Ah, oh, well, I were in the new one. Okay, so. then later on this week there will be a segment live from the uproar offices. Yes, yeah, okay. Because yes. <laughs> uh, Big Dave was doing a bit of work for you there, wasn't Big he? Big Dave, it was doing gifted. Uh, that should have been here today, I must admit, but it's not. Printers, uh, unfortunately, just never got it sorted. But uh, 
it's supposed to be the first day of Gifted, but that's the Irish mythology. Mythology? Uh, gifted mythology. mythology. Gifted mythology. mythology. Been talked How many of those behind the scenes for about three years? Oh yes, do you remember? Yeah, like, I do years? remember. I yes, do remember. Yeah, we were going to do and pull all the Irish yep. mythology yep. together, and, and I'm delighted to see it actually see print now because well, it, it was always a great idea. Uh, well, it, uh, you'll notice that it. Well, it, <laughs> it's not seeing. It's to see it's, it coming. It coming, coming to print. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's uh, it's been a long right. gestating, and it's always been a fantastic has, uh, idea uh, to tie into Irish mythology. So the, the plan was to actually get everybody involved, yeah, like, yeah. and then obviously, obviously scheduling. Well, well and, getting and people together. Yeah. But I'd say it was is before the, even the brilliance of lightning strike. Oh yeah, no, it was before pre lightning strike. It was, strike, it was, just, it was just about the same time. We met at two D three years ago. Yeah, and that was when I first heard about gifted. Yeah, and I was like, that sounds like a great. Because it was Mike Lynch yeah. and everybody was just yeah, involved. Everybody was supposed to be there, in. so. Bringing yeah. the clans together was the idea, but, but it's still going to be great and for one of us. If you tune in to 2D Cast episode 5, you will hear Danny coming running across uh, Water Street and Derry and saying, <laughs> The clans have come together. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, I was drunk. Oh, Don't drunk take me on. Eh? <laughs> uh, how are you liking the Belfast Film and Comic Con vibe? Well, I, um, I actually love the vibe. There's a while. A lot of people just coming over and saying hello and chatting and all like that. Yeah. So that's really good, which is always. Football seems good. to be getting nice and rammed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, there's, there's a huge queue outside. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, th this, th these are generally like media events, so I'm going to ask this seriously in all seriousness. How is business? Business is uh, it's doing great. I'm awesome, but uh, like I, you were asking how how I was getting a vibe. I haven't actually left the table. I haven't been able to leave it because, as I said, everybody's coming over and business is doing pretty well. Uh, no, that's not how it's said. Burgeness is doing pretty well. Uh, they have to keep saying the whole line. Burgeness is doing well. No, that's business is doing well. <laughs> okay, you see. You will enjoy business. business. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to read Conundrum because you know me, I fucking love steampunk. <laughs> well, no, well I, I don't actually call it steampunk. I call really? it steampunk. Because it says steampunk right there on that. Yeah, that's you know what? Says see if I read yeah. up what I wanted. <laughs> see if I read up what I wanted. Right? Yeah. People will be all, uh, I don't know what that is. I say, but it's I like. It's a conundrum. Pure freaky stuff, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, I, I, I like calling it steam pulp. Hey. Oh, pure, hey. steam pulp. Because it's based yeah. on literary pulp. No, no, that's a good idea, yeah. That's clever. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we have to go now because. Uh, Let's go run and get PJ Holden. PJ Holden wants us promptly at 12. And, and who are we to argue with PJ Holden? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Danny, go, God bless you, sir. God bless you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's Kieran here, and I'm here with someone who I've been absolutely dying to meet for a very, very, very long time. Uh, a, a very great hero of mine from comics, Mr. James O'Barr. Uh, thanks. Thanks for uh, thanks for talking with me. <laughs> no problem. Um, how have you found Belfast today? Has it been good for you? Uh, how did I find Belfast? Turn left at Dublin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't got to. See, I haven't got to see much. How have you so, found the yeah. show? Uh, it's been good. It's yeah. Been good. Pretty steady. Good. Good. Um, I saw your, a bit of your talk earlier on. Unfortunately, I was running late and I only caught a little bit of it. This isn't about you. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just managed to catch the part you were saying about the new movie. And yeah. I wanted to ask. Um, I, I heard that it's coming from a perspective of being much closer to the original book. Yeah, uh, yeah it's supposed to be a literal adaption this time. You know, good. Like starting from page one. Cool. And, and how do you feel about Luke Evans taking over the role? Um, Actually, he was the, you know, um, the, the director had on his suspect device, like the one you're using, <laughs> uh, he, had, he had all these actors and then he had them in the curl makeup. Yeah. And it was, you know, there was like 20 of them on there. And, and I, I, you know, and then most of them were hilarious. You know, Bradley, yeah. Bradley Cooper's got a big clown face, you know, <laughs> a round face. And, I mean, he's a fine actor, but yeah. it just didn't, you know, didn't he wasn't seem right. suited for it. No, no, and I, so I was flipping through all these pictures on his iPhone or, whatever, or Samsung, yep. whatever it was, and I got to uh, I got to Luke, and you know, and I, and I didn't even know who it was at first, but I said, "This is the guy right here." Yeah, and he said, "That's my choice too," because he looks perfect in the makeup. You know, he's already got that kind of tortured look on his yeah, face. Yeah, the soulful face. Um, he's, he's been, well, he's been good in, in various other films I've yeah, seen him in, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he flew over from England to, to get my blessing before he would take the part, and uh, he started well, telling me all these films he'd been in, and like, I saw that, you weren't in that. Yeah. But he, he's one of those actors that he just kind of becomes the role, and yeah. you don't even realize it's him from film to film. 
you know, kind of like Tom Hardy. You know, you don't realize that's Tom Hardy. You know, he just kind of transforms Picard's himself. Little effeminate son in, in the, the Star Trek movie, and then you know, two years later, he's he's Bronson. Yeah, so transformative. Yeah, that's well, that's hopeful. I really look forward to yeah. seeing a new version of yeah. it. Yeah, it, um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm excited about it. But it, you know, it's Hollywood; it could all fall apart at the last minute. <laughs> exactly. Too. Well, you always have comics, and um, I want to personally say. Thanks for doing Crow Comics again for the first time in a long time. Skinning the Wolves was fantastic. Oh, um, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I'm really enjoying all the books that IDW yeah. have been putting out in the last little while in relation. Carare was also a fantastic yeah. book. Uh, I loved, um, I liked Pestilence, but I loved your covers more than, than the story itself, if I must yeah, be honest. That, that one didn't um, quite work out as planned. Yeah. You know, and, you know, it was, um, uh, it was that guy's first first time writing comics yeah. and uh and, uh, and he was a novelist who was yeah, turning to comics yes. yeah yeah um and and it was the the uh, first time artist too so they kind of had a car crash somewhere in the in the pages of that book it wasn't what it was supposed to be the story for that particular one didn't flow as well but yeah. i have to say as i said coming back to uh, skinny the wolves and carare having read everything crow in between it just felt right when you came back to doing that book and um I hope that you, or I don't know. Are there any plans to do anything more with the comic books at the moment? Um, yeah, I'm working on one by myself. That you know, I'm penciling and inking, and I even do my own lettering right on the original artwork. So, oh, yeah. um, but it's, it's one man comic machine. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like 260 pages long, so it's taking me a while. Yeah, I've been working on it for about a year. So, but it should be out early next spring. Excellent, excellent. I really yeah, look forward to a, seeing it. It's a crow story with a woman lead this time. Uh, that hasn't happened since Flesh and Blood, am I right? Yeah. That, and, um, okay, can, can I ask you anything about that story? I mean, is there any other hints uh, It's, it's based on a, a, an actual incident that happened in Chicago. I like okay. to base everything around something in reality. Um, it grounds it. Yeah, with yeah it, it definitely gives it a footing in, in reality, so... Um, yeah, there was a, a wedding at a, at a Catholic church in um, in Chicago um, back in the seventies, and some oddly enough, some some American slash Irish gangsters <laughs> um, decided they were going to rob this church because it was the main parish where Sunday nights all the donations were collected yeah. into this one parish, and and, and it, I guess it was it was a substantial amount of money. Yeah. Um, so they, they um, these, I think it was four, um, four gangsters. They robbed the church, but they got, it was a big church and they got lost coming down. Hmm. So you can, I can already see the elements kind of, yeah, how and it's they, going. And they ended up, uh, there was a wedding going yeah. on at the church, in the church. And, um, um, and one of the, one of the bridesmaids, uh, boyfriend was, was an off duty policeman. And he right. happened to be in the audience, you know. And, and in America, they always carry their weapons with them. So, yeah. Um, it turned into a, a nasty shootout, and the church was burned down, and I think like 14 people died. Um, so that's the basic premise. Um, and, you know, Sizable page count you mentioned as well. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's and, you know, a big story. And it's, a, it's in yeah, and, it, and just like the original pro, it's in black and white. Oh, all excellent. hand done tones on it, and. Uh, yeah, I mean it's really labor intensive, but I like you know I don't do anything on the computer. Every yeah. everything is on, on the yeah. finished page. And, um, you know, How does it feel to be investing wrong. yourself in it again like that um, after such a? Well, I, I you know it's it's been you know it's been 25 years since yeah. the first one, so I, I feel like I have a different take on it now. And uh, you know, if if anything, it's a lot more grimmer and it's a lot more humorous too. Okay, <laughs> yeah. excellent. Um, can well, I, just I, I know what I'm doing now. And with the first one, I was just kind of fumbling around in the dark, but now I know. Know my craft. And it, I, you know. If I may say, um, I'm a comics creator myself, and it, it was a big influence on me because that book had, well, as you say, you were young, it had a raw emotion to it that transferred on the page and came out when it was read. It had something that connected with people and something that stayed true. Um, so, for people like me who saw it as an influence on them, um, I'd like to say like it's it's definitely one of my biggest single biggest influences in comics. It's what made me want to go and write comics uh, and do the kind of stuff I'm doing, which has me in a position to sit here talking to you now. Um, so oh, how fortunate you are! I I, well, I like to think so. Thank you. Um, 
it's it's been wonderful talking to you. I won't hold you yeah. too much longer um, because you know it's a show and we're yeah. obviously trying to do things. Um, but it's been a very 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 great pleasure to talk to you and. Um, Hopefully, I'll, I, I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. I hope I look forward to seeing the new book, and I look forward to seeing the new movie. Okay. Thanks very much, James. Oh, thank you. Cheers. And welcome to the 2D cast. This is about as much enthusiasm as I can muster. Uh, I'm Bobby Best, joined as two Kierons. Yay! I'm Kieron Marcantonio, and I've had a great day. I've had a great day too, but now I'm going home to my bed. Yes. I'm not going home to my bed. I'm going to keep conning. Yes, Neve, if you're listening to this, um, this is why I'm back early a week ago. I know I was supposed to be back on Sunday, but I just, I can't, I can't, I can't. The con has broken, Bobby. <laughs> Bobby has been broken by the con. I just want to go home. Anyway, that's it from Belfast Film and Comic Con. Really? Is that all we're going to say? It's been a wonderful con. It has. It has been a wonderful uh, con. I'm here for tomorrow, so I'll try and record some more segments with some other people that we can hopefully put together yeah. with this. That's good, but they wouldn't have known that until yeah. you said it. Well, you can just cut it out. No, I'm not, I'm not doing that. All right, yeah. fine. <laughs> not That's not how that. we roll. Okay, I fine. I actually had to admit, I, I had some misgivings about this, you know, because it was one of the uh, bigger, more tradey One of the big boy cons. Ones, yeah. But it's, uh, no, it's, it's I would good. describe it as a bigger, more tradey con that also allows for the independent yeah. experience with the people that you're looking to meet. Yeah, they didn't, yeah. they didn't fuck with anyone. No, no, they didn't fuck with anyone. Every single guest has been totally accessible, spending time with people, talking to people. Um, Photo sessions have been fun. Interviews we've done have been fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's been we a good have day. beer. You did, did have beer. We did have beer. Yeah. Don't you want more beer, do you? I do want more beer. No, you can't have more beer. I know. Uh, so uh, next week we will. Paul Heyman. Uh, uh, can we put that on the long finger until we get this bloody Star Trek thing out of the way? That's <laughs> gonna take like ten weeks or something. Okay. Well, I mean, we'll do, no, no, it'll be over a week, but just oh, okay. it's ten minute maximum. Yes. Mm. Or maybe no. It's, could we do Paul Heyman on Tuesday night? Possibly. I don't know. This? I honestly don't know. Okay. We'll see. Yeah. Right. We, we will organize something. Yes, we will. Off she goes. Away she goes. Away she goes. And away we go. Good evening. Yes. God bless. Good fight. Good night. I'm the last